Uh, good morning. I'm Jeff Montgomery. I'm with the athens Clark County Public Information Office. Uh, thank you for coming out today for this media conference. Uh, athens Clark County Mayor Kelly Gertz will provide some initial remarks about community safety initiative and athens Clark County's status related to immigration. After his remarks, uh, he will take some time to answer questions from the media. athens Clark County Police Chief Jerry Salters will also be available if there are any specific questions related to department processes or data provided by Mayor Gertz. Mayor Gertz. Thank you, Thank you Jeff. Hey, good morning, everyone. I uh, appreciate your willingness to gather here today. So I may share some information along with the chief, with members of the press and the public at large. I'll begin by noting that we're all grieving the loss of Lake and Riley, just as we've grieved so many tragedies over the years here in Athens. Each one of these is a reminder of our collective failure to be where we wish to be as a community and a society. Our anger at these murders and other criminal activities will drive us to continue to improve our community's safety as we've been pursuing for so many years. I empathize with the frustration and anger so many are feeling right now. Chief and I are parents, parents who've raised children in this town, who pour our heart and our souls into our work as parents. And I can't imagine the grieving of this family and their loved ones. Any murder in this community is a tragedy, but particularly when we see young lives cut short, it means that the blossoming that we've expected for our own children is not going to bear fruit for this family. So as a parent and as a career educator, this is a traumatizing experience. I do want to say I appreciate the collaborative work of the University of Georgia Police Department, of the athens Clark County Police Department, and the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, who made quick work of this case. But we will do more. Today, I'm here to outline new investments in public safety that build upon our earlier work, clarify information about our community's status regarding immigration, answer related questions, and leave you with some key data points in the document you've been provided. Chief Salters is here to lend his expertise and ability to provide detailed answers to some of the questions you may have later. So I want to begin uh, just by noting some new investments that you're going to be seeing and that I'll be asking the County Commission to endorse this coming Tuesday. You may have also seen that the University of Georgia announced more than $7 million of new investments in public safety yesterday. We deeply appreciate the partnership we have with the university. In so many regions, there are stalwart collaborators, and we're glad to work together on this. So among the first things you're going to be seeing rolling out for endorsement by the commission this Tuesday is advancing our real-time crime center. We took the first step toward this real-time crime center in the last budget year, and we're going to be advancing this to completion including making sure that we tie all our publicly accessible cameras and those private cameras that have engaged with us into a unified system and staffing that real-time crime center on each shift so that we can rapidly pursue cases. You're also going to see, for endorsement by the Commission on Tuesday, a mobile closed-circuit television heavy-duty surveillance trailer. This means that when we have large-scale community events, large gatherings in the summertime and festivals that we can act in a mobile manner in the way that we will want to act in high crime areas every day and every week. Given our expanding trail network in the community, what we're also going to experience is funding of additional all-terrain vehicles for our police department so that those places that are difficult to traverse on foot or by motor vehicle we can get to very quickly and consistently. And finally, among new expenditures, we're going to expand our pan, to, pan, tilt, and zoom camera array to those places where data would indicate to us that we need to have them consistently based on the lived experience of our officers and the chief. Now, these new investments rest upon things we've done for the last many years. 
So I want to mention a few of those, and again, you have this information in your sheet. We, of course, set up the first phase of this real-time crime center just in the last year. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a center into which not only public cameras, but the university and private cameras will be able to be fed. We've also expanded our ballistics identification apparatus. For many years, we'd have to send off ballistics to the state. Sometimes it would take us days or weeks to get back good information about them. We have that in-house now, and so we have been able to actively and successfully pursue many dozens of cases because of having this right here on this campus. We've also seen a dramatic increase in salaries for our police officers over the past number of years. We introduced a STEP program into our pay scale in 2019, so officers would know that they were going to consistently see pay increases. And so as we stand here in 2024, a new officer just post-certified is making almost $54,000 a year with a $10,000 signing bonus. And it's to the great credit of the chief and his staff that we've been able to increase our ranks. And so for the first time in five years, 2023, saw a net crease in the number of officers employed in the athens Clark County Police Department. We also initiated last year a cadet corps because what we want to do is make sure that our young people have a career pathway into public safety. And so these young folks, even as high school students, will be introduced to public safety and have the opportunity to contemplate again this high wage, great career. We've been expanding our camera arrays downtown and elsewhere. So we have a number of license plate readers throughout the community. And we also have more than 24 pan, tilt, and zoom cameras downtown that are of much higher quality than the earlier iteration of these. We can get good information and actionable intelligence off them, and the police department has used that successfully. We also initiated a take-home vehicle policy several years ago that was extended not just to those who lived in athens Clark County, but all of those patrol officers here at ACCPD. This has meant that we can more quickly respond to crimes as people are coming and going from work or just picking up their groceries on their way home. We've also provided flexibility to the district attorney's office so that out outside contract attorneys are able to pursue cases quickly through that office. Now, public safety, as anybody who's in this world knows, is a multi-layered phenomenon. And so while there is fantastic work that happens from the folks who work in this shop, public safety doesn't rest with policing alone. Public safety involves fair and quality housing. It involves good work with youth. It involves community outreach and so many more provisions that just give people a good, solid platform from which to exist. So we've invested in quality housing in this community to the tune of over $50 million in locally directed funds since 2020, including a massive redevelopment of the North Downtown area that historically was one of our highest crime areas in the community, along with partnerships with Habitat for Humanity, the Athens Land Trust, the East Athens Development Corporation, and many others. We've also brought new dollars into youth development here in Athens with more than $3 million provided by the athens Clark County Unified Government for the school district, more than $2 million in the last year provided to the Boys and Girls Club of Athens to do new and expanded programming, and over $500,000 each of the last two summers to provide new summer training and activities. Since 2019, we've also provided approximately a $1 million a year to Family Connection Communities and Schools of Athens to help their neighborhood outreach program, the neighborhood leaders, make sure people know how to find good employment, how to get access to food and nutrition, and how to get access to child care. And we continue to work strongly on workforce development and employment opportunities, including in conjunction with the University of Georgia, Athens Technical College, and the Clark County School District. You saw this bear fruit last year with the announcement of Meisner our biggest economic development opportunity ever in the history of this community that will be able to employ folks 
from just high school graduates through PhDs with a median wage of $85,000. So while we're here today to talk about public safety, we need to talk about all the things, of course, that contribute to public safety. I've received many calls, many emails, many queries from the press in recent days about this notion of a sanctuary city, and so I want to lay some things to rest here today. This term sanctuary city doesn't have a sole legal or procedural definition. You can look in Georgia statute and you can find a clear definition for a unified government. You can look in contractual language and you can find out exactly what it means to be an SEC institution. Sanctuary city doesn't track with either of those. And so that term means different things to different people depending on the context of the discussion. Uh, we know what Many, it means. Many of the elements, liar. many of the elements, liar. 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 We, liar. we are here to listen. Liar. You're a liar. We are here to listen. Liar. There'll be time for liar. questions. You are guilty and got blood on your head for this murder, sir. Many of the aspects that are ascribed to sanctuary cities we know what sanctuary are cities things mean. that are disallowed by Georgia liar. law. Sanctuary policy, which is what right, we do. You. And we contribute a document every year to the Georgia Department of Audits, indicating that we do not correspond to these definitions under state law. Yes, you do. And no policies have been adopted Please by the mayor and commission that have created sanctuary Athens. city status in Sir, Athens. You need to resign. One protocol resign that sometimes now. arises. Resign. resign now. Resign. You allow one protocol, this to happen, sir. One protocol that you sometimes arises is the approach that sheriff's offices and jails take to what are termed detainers. The sheriff's office approach has varied over the years, but this question, again, in the purview of the elected sheriff, honors detainers when issued by a federal judge or federal magistrate. In the main, I caution against conflating immigration and crime. The data demonstrates that the two are not connected. Because the impact of federal immigration policy on localities has been under such consistent discussion in recent months. I do want to say a few words about this. It's my 18th year as a local government policymaker, and my work has overlapped with four U.S. presidencies and numerous iterations of Congress. All of them have failed to reach agreement on how to handle immigration. We had Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush in the White House and Tip O'Neill and Ted Kennedy in Congress the last time this was meaningfully addressed in Washington, D.C. I appreciate the work of the recent bipartisan group of senators and this recent bipartisan group in the Senate has crafted a bill to make headway on this issue. While no legislation is perfect, this would be a step forward, and I urge Congress and the White House to act now and demonstrate a willingness to continue to work on complementary legislation in the future. My time in office has demonstrated that if your approach to legislation is all or nothing, you're going to get nothing every single time. Both current U.S. residents and prospective immigrants benefit from a consistent and stable approach with adequate funding attached to it, and that is what our nation needs. If our approach to immigration is thought to change from day to day or month to month, Desperate people fleeing war, famine, unstable governments, and drug cartels are willing to roll the dice and undertake a journey to the United States. In addition to this information, I've included in the document that you've received you some data, some of them are going to be back. and I ask you to go ahead and take a look at this data, because oftentimes people will wish to ascribe certain things to the Athens community, and I want you to have some accurate information in your hands. And so among the things in the document that you see is both our population trajectory over the last 30 years, as well as our murders per year, every year from 1992 to 2023. You'll see our murders have been on a downward trajectory, even though we've been adding typically 1,000 people to the athens Clark County community every year during this time period. I cast no aspersions on my peer mayors in other cities around the state. But I challenge you to examine every city in Georgia or every county, over 75,000 persons in population, and we stack up notably favorably to these because of the hard work of our officers and so many partners in the community. Because oftentimes, 
folks notice through the lens of a college-centered community. I've also included some information indicating where we are relative to those other SEC communities throughout the nation and the region. You'll note that we tend to be toward the middle or the bottom of the pack. Overall, a place like Baton Rouge has about twice the crime rate, and a place like Auburn or College Station all right, is about one and a half times less. So I encourage you to look at this information, but what I want to leave you with is this notion that the only appropriate number of murders in this community and the number that we are going to be working our tails off every day for is zero. I can say that on behalf of everybody here in the unified government of athens clark county you'll have to deport all illegal criminal aliens i have a number of members of the press That's here the only way to do that sir and the so DA will lose the cases. what i would like is if you're a member of the press if you'd identify yourself and the outlet with which you're associated and ask your question i'd like to answer questions for a little bit mayor kelly Gertz, claudia kelly was out of fox news Good morning. Um, before I ask my question, could you first address the protesters that are here? They're obviously really upset with the situation. If you want to just address um, them being here and the signs that they're holding, you know, the blood is on your hands, justice for Lake and Riley. I'd say trauma affects all of us. And I understand in the wake of a great tragedy like this, we are all deeply hurt. And everybody expresses their hurt differently. Uh, who just, uh, voted, just who to, just voted to, 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 to make Athens Clark County a sanctuary city, sir? Who? What's their name? What legislation were you talking about? But, but I, I'm an old man. My ears can only hear one thing at a time. And so I'm asking you, Claudia, if you'd repeat that question. Yeah. Um, we want you, to ask questions, You mentioned too. something about ahead, legislation earlier. I couldn't hear what you were saying because mm -hmm. of um, the protest. Could you just repeat what you were saying about legislation? I certainly will. There's been no legislation from this government that has created sanctuary city status. Uh, I also mentioned the prospect of federal legislation. Age 20, 2019, liar. I, I need to call on one person at a time. I was a high school teacher for a lot of years and I got better behavior out of them. And then my final question for you is, um, two public defenders have now given their notice that they're gonna be representing Jose Ibarra in, in this case. What's your reaction to this notion that you know taxpayer dollars are essentially going to be funding the defense for this illegal immigrant whether he's found guilty or not he is here um, as a legislator that set of procedural justice is not in my domain so you'd have to ask those folks either in public defense or prosecution do you have any reaction so, to that just being the mayor of the city don't at this time yes mayor steve gelbach from wsb tv some of their concerns have to do with the 2019 resolution that was passed and signed by you after you came into office it is entitled in support of immigrants and the undocumented community here, and it does state that all statuses are welcome. Do you want to respond to that? And does that give the, the you say it's only a term and definition, but does that give the impression that this is a sanctuary city? I, I appreciate the question. Thank you very much for asking. I, I need to be able to answer clearly, so I'll need the voices in the room to listen. Appreciate that. Are you going to rescind it? What I'd like to note. Is it here in Athens okay. Clark County? We center You're our work fired. in the public sector. You need to go, sir. We don't want to hear from you no more. You're not defending us. You're not upholding your oath of office, sir. You are lawless. You are a crim criminal. I'm trying to ask a question. Yeah. So your press members. If non-members of the press. Yeah, I'm a press member. Might be asked to leave. The people. We created this government and we pay your salary. You do what we want you to do, not, not your, what you want to do. That's the problem agenda. with this lawlessness in our country. I, I, so I, you're I, not upholding I've your got a question from members of the press. So obviously that gives the impression to the community and even parents out there who are sending students <coughs> to your city to go to college. What do you say to that? I appreciate the question. Thank you very much. I want to say that we center our work here in athens Clark County in people's humanity. And part of everybody's humanity is the expectation of human dignity. While 2019 was not that long ago, you might remember the dynamic we were living in in the late teens in this country, where you had the President of the United States speaking in the most vile terms about people who were foreign born. And you had that notion metastasizing in places like Charlottesville. When I was younger, so when we have, I was a criminal, 
And you know what I thought about doing? Crossing the border to Mexico to get away from my crimes. Son, I'm going to ask you to leave. Jesus Christ. He saved me, and I no longer live that lawless life, I'm, which you do. Son, I'm going to ask you, you to leave. You are lawless, Mr. Mayor. I'd be glad to schedule some time with you if you'd like some individual time. Yeah, I'd like to spend some time with you. Let's do that, but I, got, I need to continue. I got a question. How about a town hall? Uh, sorry. I went to so meet are, the are people. Are you going to the resolution? Is that still in place? Is that, does, does that give the impression this is a sanctuary city? What, no, you can't call it that under Georgia law? What we wish to do is dignify everybody's humanity. There's nothing you in that know, resolution no. that That's creates the law. You, you took an oath to uphold the law, not your feelings or nor your opinion. Chief, I don't you know if you're a No, sir. You're talking BS to us right now. I, I need to answer one question sir, at a time. Right here, sir. Alex Kaplan. I'm going to continue my answer from a moment no. ago, and then I'll get it. You I called me like a white supremacist in your resolution. Well, that was not no, nice to me. Was it? What, had enough and what we, we have wish to do? Right to speak. This is America still. What we wish to do? Okay. All right. Is to understand. Is to understand that those families that are here came here under less than ideal circumstances. I've outlined my desire for better, better federal legislation that would standardize the immigration process. We've not, not been living in that environment. I mentioned I was a career educator. I've worked with a lot of students and their families in this community. And the practical reality is that those families tend to be blended amongst a variety of immigration statuses. We want to create a stable environment for people in our communities. And when that community is disrupted by hate or vitriol, that's not a safe environment for their school children and their families to live in. It's called righteous indignation, sir. The resolution speaks to that question. So. Not vitriol, it's Mayor, righteous it's indignation. Right. Sorry, Nick here with 11 Alive News. I, I know that some of the protesters who are here right now are concerned with some of the language in the resolution. Could you address the aspect that talks about white nationalists and xenophobes have been emboldened by some politicians? Was that an issue that your community was dealing with at that time? Uh, that's the, an issue the United States was dealing with in the late teens. How about locally? We received information of all kinds of terrible things. Had anything happened here? I mean, was there any, I'm just trying to figure out mm -hmm. language-wise, why we, that was we had, we had hate activity toward members of this community, and we wished to indicate that we didn't want to embolden that hate activity. Liars! Right here, Alex Capriello with News Nation. While we can debate whether or not Athens is a sanctuary city, the fact of the matter is Jose Ibarra and at least four or five other undocumented immigrants were living in that apartment. So I want to know whether or not you feel, as city leaders, that you owe the Lake and Riley family an apology for allowing that to happen in the first place. Yeah. We are deeply sorry for this tragedy. The responsibility for this crime rests solely upon the perpetrator. No, rest on you, sir. God Almighty Others. said so. Yep. Got time for about two God minutes. God Almighty speaks today. This could be a question for the chief. Is, is the, what is the current policy in with the government is when it comes to notifying federal apply. immigration authorities? I mean, and was was this particular suspect was he? Pick up for a shoplifting. One of the representatives of the state house told our reporter there yesterday that he was did that interaction or was detained at some point by you guys. Sure, there was an arrest made on him in October for a shoplifting case. That is an active case that I can't talk about. He was cited, which is common for certain misdemeanor offenses. Uh, when we have encounter with people, we run them through our GCIC as well as our NCIC. If there was any warnings or anything that had come back from the federal government holds warrants, then we would have held him at that time. And that was checked, and there was not any warrants at that time, nor any status. We can't look on our computer and tell you the status of someone's immigration. We don't have that information. Do you notify federal authorities, though, but only, if it's, well, only if there's a particular warrant, I guess, for their arrest? So if we, if we got place a hold on, then we would notify whatever federal authority that was. And then when they go to the jail, then that's where also the 287G program comes in, where uh, federal authorities are notified. Madison Scarpino with the Fox News Channel. We know from uh, arrest affidavits that Ibarra is accused of seriously disfiguring Lake and Riley's skull. What was the weapon used? I, I can't go into that. This case is solely UGA Police Department, University of Georgia Police Department. Um, 
again, I'm not going to go into details of that investigation. Uh, I just appreciate all the efforts from University of Georgia Police Department, athens Clark County Police Department, GBI, on quickly finding this violent offender. Is there any additional details that you can share with us today? I, I wish I could. I can't. You know, it's at, at this point, it's moved towards prosecution, and for the integrity of the case, I would not, not comment on Mayor, the, uh, One more. From Telemundo. Um, have you been approached by any entity like the Sheriff's Office or other entities to uh, taking place 287G program that allows the federal government to deport people who has a criminal background. It, that is a, a program that check uh, undocumented persons to see if they have a criminal background. Have you been approached for somebody to implement this program in Athens, Clark? I have not been approached. Uh, again, largely that's a phenomenon that happens at booking, that happens in the jail, which by Georgia statute is under the sheriff's authority. So thank you everyone for being here today. I appreciate your time. Thank you.